Hello, welcome to uh, our monthly update and it's quite appropriate that we address you here today, the 26th anniversary of Pat Finucane's death. And since we last spoke, I was at The Hague at an international conference on international law and human rights. And I spoke about the brilliant 39-year-old lawyer, Pat Finucane, and how he's shone a bright light of human rights law on to the most horrendous of British wrongs. And the fact that the family, um, so many years on, despite promises from the British government, is still waiting on an independent inquiry into what happened to him on that Sunday when he was brutally murdered and his wife injured in that attack. I also spoke uh, today in the chamber about children, protecting children on the internet. And I'm leaving here in Strasbourg and heading to Brussels uh, this afternoon. And this evening I will meet President Abbas uh, from the Palestinian president who is going to engage uh, with myself and give me an update about the International Criminal Court and how they are progressing that initiative and also the occupation of Palestine, the wall and also Sinn Féin uh, MEPs were there a few months ago and witnessed for ourselves the atrocities that are happening in the West Bank. We didn't get access to Gaza and that is something that we are still trying to do. And finally, Matt and I and, and our other colleagues are involved in this, but primarily Matt and I will be next week during what's called the Green Week, a constituency week, and one of the days we will be in Fermanagh with our MP Michelle Gildernew and we are hosting an anti-fracking conference and we're bringing international uh, guests to speak at that and we hope a, a couple of hundred will be in attendance in, a, in Fermanagh because there's obviously not just concerns in Fermanagh but there's also concerns throughout the 32 counties of Ireland about the implications of fracking and particularly with regards to what's called TTIP. Matt is going to be focusing on that and the dangers of TTIP for fracking and for other issues in in Ireland. So I will hand you over now to Leah who will give her update of the month. Gurmagas Martina, well far to Roiv Gadi and Tourish Shahakarde. Last week we had a very strong fisheries delegation over where we had a hearing with the Commission. They outlined all their concerns in relation to discards, um, the ban on sea bass fishing, penalty points and all the issues really and the implications of the common fisheries policy. I think it was a very positive delegation and as a result of that um, we, have now, we are now starting a study on the penalty point and how that's affecting our fishing community in Ireland, the social and economic impact of that. So I'm hoping that eventually it will be a long haul but we'll be able to insert legislation to ease off on some of those criminalising aspects of the penalty point system to do with the fishing industry. Our focal islands on Homa, I am now a shadow rapporteur on the Juncker Investment Plan. And I can tell you that I have serious worries about it. I think it comes with a huge health warning. It is going to affect universities that are um, dependent on third level grants because that money is being taken out of the budget and being now going to be put into private investment um, capabilities for people who want to, to invest in highly risk, risky ventures. So there'll be more about that coming out. Um, and then on top of that, I suppose really, uh, I have been nominated and shortlisted as MEP of the year for the regional policy section, which is as a direct result of the leader delegation that we had out here. So it does show you that the work does get recognised, and it's a huge recognition for us as a team. I think it gives us credibility here and it raises the profile. So unfortunately, none of you can vote for me. It is up to the other MEPs here. So I'm back on the campaign trail once again. <laughs> Uh, I suppose the big story for me this week is around the country of origin labelling. It's something that I have, I suppose, been very interested in uh, since having the role I did in, on Safe Food as the chair of the Safe Food, um, but particularly since the pork dioxin scandal in 2008, where we realised that we actually didn't know where the pork was coming from and that the labelling was uh, very misleading. And I suppose we've been working on that for years. It was great to have the opportunity now as an MEP to actually push that forward. And it was passed with a huge majority yesterday in the Parliament. But what was, I suppose, particularly interesting from an Irish point of view was that uh, coming from the government, we were being advised to vote against it. And this is a real shift in policy because in 2009, uh, Fine Gael and Labour both supported the country of origin labelling for processed meat. So they've obviously uh, decided to now forget about consumer interest 
interests and safety and to go over to uh, lobbying for the big corporate industry. Um, so it was great for consumers yesterday, a big win over the co uh, corporate lobbyists. Yeah, well, I suppose the big news right across Europe has been the election of Syriza into government in Greece. We would know the Syriza party very well. We work very closely with Syriza MEPs. Part of the, I suppose, development has been the absolute surprise among the European institutions and many European leaders that a government would actually get elected and then attempt to achieve what they promised they would attempt to achieve prior to being elected. We are used to, from countries like Ireland, governments getting elected on promises that they have no intention of keeping. So the Syriza government seemed to be different and they are putting forward a number of what we would consider to be very pragmatic and sensible solutions that would benefit not only the Greek people but would certainly benefit countries like Ireland in terms of a restructuring of the debt burden that has been placed on ordinary citizens. Unfortunately the Irish government have decided to stand against their own people and against the Greek people also and in um, conjunction with those vested interests within the European Union who want to see ordinary citizens bear the brunt of an austerity agenda. We have been very vocal in terms of outlining our support for a debt conference. I've been using my position on the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee to outline the reality that if there isn't some accommodation of the Syriza proposals made, well then nobody in Europe is going to benefit. So we're going to continue to do that over the next number of months and we're going to put pressure on our own government because if the Irish government are refusing to stand up for its own citizens and for the citizens of Europe who are born the brunt of an austerity agenda, well then they should stand aside and allow the people of Ireland to elect a government that will and that's our job at hand over the next number of weeks and months. Until next time, Slangafoyle.